I'm Victoria Pearson but you can call me V and this week has been completely off my normal routine because we have had half term this week and Halloween this week and next week or rather when you're watching it this week I'm also going to have my daughter home for her reading week from university and so everything has been really really chaotic and I have not yet made a video for you. I am actually in quite a lot of pain today as well because we went trick-or-treating last night and um, the day that I'm filming this is Friday so it's the 1st of November my child is about to flip from Halloween everything to Christmas everything um, but right today I am recovering from us doing our trick or treating because we walked so, so far. We walked over most of the village that we lived in. Highlights for me, going out dressed as a witch and then an actual black cat coming up to me in the street for a fuss. That was brilliant. I think it was fated that I should have a black cat and I would like the cat distribution network to hurry up and distribute me a cat, please. Not sure how happy the dog would be about that or the husband, let's be honest. Other highlights included, actually, in the village we have this sort of unspoken rule that you only knock on the doors of people who have decorations out for Halloween. Even if their lights are on, if there isn't like a pumpkin or something outside, you just walk by their house. One person obviously could not be doing with pumpkins this year, and I don't blame them, it's messy and smelly and I don't really like it either. And so they had got free plastic milk bottles, like the four pint bottles, drawn some eyes on them, put some glow sticks inside, they were ghosts. It was fantastic. I said that was fantastic to her and she said, yeah, I just I just couldn't be bothered with the carving. And I can't say I blame her for that because I attempted some pumpkin carving and I tried to be a bit fancy with it and I made like a raven on a moon. And first of all, my raven looked like a pigeon. If I've got a picture, I'm going to put it here now. First of all, my raven looked like a pigeon to start with. But also I did it far too early and so within a few days, like the day before Halloween, the raven just slowly flopped over and so what I really had was a big pumpkin-y mess. But hey, it's a pumpkin. I put it out, the trick-or-treaters will know that we are half arsedly participating in Halloween. But we actually spent so long out trick-or-treating that by the time we got home and put our pumpkins out, there was only one group of trick-or-treaters left. And so I still have so many sweets and I'm going to just be giving them away to random delivery drivers and stuff because my kids also got loads of sweets when they were trick-or-treating and there's just far too many sweets in the house. So after we had finished trick-or-treating and after I had used like almost this entire bottle of oil trying to get the makeup off of my nine-year-old that I had stuck on far too well with eyelash glue, um, we got him safely into bed and I settled down to watch the double wheel finale of Agatha All Along, which I mentioned in my vlog last week when I was talking about um, the Netflix series Chaos and Epic the Musical. I said last week you should definitely watch it, Lesbian Witches, What's Not to Love. I didn't love the ending at all. I know that it is more um, in line with the comic books but I didn't feel they needed to do that with the ending. I'm not going to spoil it for you by telling you what the ending was, um, but it wasn't exactly queer baiting, but it was kind of tropey, and I didn't love how they wrapped up the storylines. That being said, I think it is ripe for a prequel show, and if they want to make a prequel show showing the love story between Rio and Agatha, I would watch the heck out of it. Particularly, I loved the relationship between them, but I wanted to see the relationship between them and Agatha's child as well. I thought a lot of the things that were hinted at in the show as law would have made really, really good stuff on screen. They didn't go that way, fair enough. Um, but I didn't love the ending. But what I hated the most about the ending was the fact that I knew how it was going to end before I had even switched on the show. Within three hours of the show coming out, People were spoiling the endings, like, a lot of people on Twitter as well were doing, like, Agatha spoilers, dot, 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 and then the spoiler in a big picture form that you couldn't possibly avoid. Like, it's almost worse that you are acknowledging that you're spoiling this show and still doing it than if you were just being ignorant and just showing it. I wonder if the on-demand sort of access to shows and the way that they do sort of drop a whole season now and you binge watch it. I wonder if that's completely changed the etiquette of how we used to deal with things. It would have been pretty unthinkable, even a couple of years ago, to 
post spoilers about the ending of a show within hours of it dropping. Like, that's rude and it, I don't like it. Like, why would you ruin the show for everybody else if it's a show that you love? Especially if, like, your entire account is about how much you love this show. Why are you ruining it for other people? And it's not like I could avoid it either because even though I had silenced, muted the hashtag for the show, the names of all of the main characters and all of these other things in an attempt to avoid spoilers because I couldn't watch it until the day after it came out, I still got spoilers literally as soon as I woke up, opened my socials and there was a big spoiler for the ending. That is just ruining it for other people. And if you want people to love the shows as much as you do, maybe leave a little bit of mystery for them to discover because it is boring going into watching a season finale knowing that you know the ending already, that you've seen the big visuals, that you know all the big plot twists. It's not fair on other viewers for you to spoil it like that. Not everybody can make being a fan of a show their full-time job, wait until three o'clock in the morning to watch something. And what was very annoying is that I saw somebody else complaining about the spoilers as well. And someone said, well, if you didn't watch it straight away, you're not a real fan. Some of us have lives, some of us have jobs, some of us have responsibilities, we're not all full-time fans. Why would you ruin the show that you love for other people who also really enjoy it? Very annoying behaviour and I'm not quite sure when it became acceptable. I'm not going to go against what I just said and give you too many spoilers, but on Halloween Epic the Musical dropped a new saga. I love the way that Epic the Musical releases in sagas. Um, whilst the writer is working on some songs, we've still got some and it's coming out in little intervals and I love that. And I love that they called them sagas because in the original myths they would have been called sagas as well. And so I really, really like how they've done that. But the new saga, the Vengeance Saga, has just dropped on Halloween and it was absolutely beautiful. Now, if you know your classics, it is not a massive spoiler to say that Calypso doesn't get the happiest ending, and I'm sure that nobody was expecting her to get a happy ending, but her song was so emotional and so raw, it really made me feel for her. I was feeling quite tearful for this character, and I really thought that that was very beautiful. I spoke to my nine-year-old about which of the songs was his favourite, and he really, really liked um, the last song where um, Odysseus has a big enemy to fight and he said that he really liked how much he changed from the beginning as well. He really, really liked the character growth and development that was going on with Odysseus at the moment. Um, and I really, really love that he was able to engage with such a classic sort of text, thousands of years old text, um, that he is still being able to connect to these characters, he's still being able to relate to their struggles, he's still able to think about how their emotions are being processed, what the trauma is doing to them of being at war for so long. And that is something that Epic the Musical has done that I don't think many other pieces of art have done recently, where it's able to take this really, really old set of myths make them really, really relevant without changing any major details and then being able to appeal to people across such broad age ranges. I mean, I was introduced to Epic the Musical by my 18-year-old daughter who also introduced it to my nine-year-old son. Me and my husband, I'm nearly 40, we're watching it and loving it, nine-year-olds watching it and loving it. We're all able to discuss and debate what these characters' choices and how they're feeling and what their emotions are. And it's really, really cool to have a piece of media that does have that sort of broad appeal across the family that you can watch all together. There's not very many shows that are able to appeal to everybody in my family because we're such a massive range of ages, but everybody in the household has really, really connected with it and has really, really enjoyed it. And because of that as well, my nine-year-old is now very into Greek myths, which is timed brilliantly because his topic after Christmas at school is going to be ancient Greek myth. And so the way that it's been able to get him excited and bring these stories back to life again is really, really cool. And I'm so glad that we watched it. I would strongly recommend checking it out. There is one more saga left to drop. That'll be in a few months time, I think. And then the story will be completed. And seriously, the animatics for them that are coming out already are just brilliant. It still amazes me how quickly and these artists on YouTube and that managed to get this artwork out and done and managed to animate it all. 
and the sort of thing that would take me years to learn how to do probably they're just managing to bring it out within hours of the um song's official releases and i'm so impressed by the quality of the talent on display by it and um, i do strongly recommend that you look it up on spotify or youtube and check out the album because it's really really good and i really really hope that they managed to make it into a stage show anyway tomorrow i am off to pick up my daughter from university and bring her home for a week for her reading week i'm so so excited to see her she has really taken to her first half term at university. She has been doing really, really well with her schoolwork. She's made new friends. I'm so, so proud of her and absolutely cannot wait for her to be home and to spend some good quality time with her. It's such a shame that her reading week didn't quite match up to the other children's half terms because they're all going to be back at school when she has come home. I'm so excited to see her and I'm hoping that my back will be behaving by then because it's quite a long drive to go and get her. So it was just a quick one this week because like I say, I'm in a lot of pain from the trick or treat and everything has been completely off routine this week. In fact, I am filming this with three people in the house when normally I'm doing it completely on my own. So I'm actually feeling quite self-conscious about filming right now. Um, and so I will be back next week, hopefully with a slightly longer vlog for you with a bit more sort of bite to it and not just me chatting. But if you can't wait until then to see me again, I will be here every single morning in your shorts, taking a great big deep breath, letting you know what I'm grateful for, what I'm up to that day. And I'm also here on a witchy Wednesday doing an intuitive tarot card read for you as well. Now, if you love my tiny little mini readings on YouTube shorts, then you can go to my Kofi and book a short or long reading and I will get more in depth and more personal with it for you and we'll see what the cards hold. I will be back on Monday. But until then, you have yourself a beautiful week.